I was saying here before you came with your camera was that we Christians have, have, the, have, a, have the power. Uh, yeah, I know, but I know. I can control where that goes. Okay. <laughs> the we Catholics. This is a light show. <laughs> all right, all right. We Catholics, I was saying we Catholics have the, the latent power, according to Jesus in this anyway, to, to heal the sick, raise the dead, to cast out demons. You don't see many Catholics doing that. <laughs> and so one could say either this is false or we're pretty poor examples of Christians. So we go and meditate on that and do what we can. I, because we believe we've got to do what we can to do what this says we can do. And that means getting our faith strengthened. Because he says in here, our Lord, we just need faith the size of a mustard seed. But we have to counter that. If we have that faith the size of a mustard seed, we just got to cancel out this, these doubts. This constant doubting which comes to us from our life in modern England. Doubting of what, sorry? Oh, doubt. Well, like he says, oh, if you say to, a, to this tree, wither away and die, as Jesus said, and it will die. But if we doubt, doubt it when we say it, it won't happen. Jesus says, if you say something... Well, it eventually wither away, wouldn't it? Yeah, but this is him, him saying it and it causing it to wither away. He said it within 24 hours. Now, he says, if you say it without doubting in your heart that it will happen, then it will happen. But if there's doubt in your heart, it won't happen. So we Catholics, we're full of doubts. We doubt the Bible, we doubt everything. We're, in fact, you know, we're all brought up in the same culture. It's a culture where you're supposed to be skeptical about things. Question things, yeah, doubt. That's a big jump though, you don't mind me saying, from oh. the withering of the tree as a doubt factor to Catholics generally having doubts. Oh, yeah, it, it's basically this that faith is one thing we've got to have as, believe, as Catholics, but we won't be able to say, say somebody's sick, say our, our mum is dead sick. We can, Jesus, Jesus has promised to us that we can pray for her and she'll be healed, but. He also says, if you doubt in your heart that this can really happen, it will not work. She will not be healed. So you've got to do, we've got to do what we can. Doesn't that risk create, Move the date. Like a trauma in someone's mind. Let's say the mother does die. Yeah. And someone has no doubt yeah. that they would cure that, that they would be able to pray yeah. to God and something should happen. Yeah. They all get around in, in, in a congregation to do that. Yes. It doesn't happen. Yes. It doesn't that undermine their faith? Yes. And illegitimately, perhaps. Yeah. You've got a very good point. A very good point. Because the promise is not that anything we ask for will be given. It's got to be in accord with the will of God. He, he is standing there. It seems pretty clear. There are certain people he definitely will um, cure if we exercise our faith. But that doesn't mean at everyone. And we have, what we've got to do is at one hand, believe that if, it's, if it really is his will, it will happen. But then if it doesn't happen, we examine ourselves to see whether we had doubts. But if after examining ourselves, we found that we didn't have any doubt at all, and yet they died, we must say that was God's will and not for this person to survive. Because it could be like, she's very elderly and it's just time to isn't go. That, isn't that the recipe for the, for the famous Catholic guilty? Oh, Cal oh well, I, I, any time, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, Catholic guilt though is generally people who are on like Radio 4 who say, I was a Catholic and I freed myself from Catholic guilt. See, this, I used, when I used to listen to Radio 4, this is a regular thing I picked up. Catholic guilt is where people who are now following a, an un-Catholic lifestyle want to say they suffered because they were subject to Catholic guilt. We would say Catholic guilt was healthy. It was where you believed in the Ten Commandments and that you must not do certain things like you must not um, have sex outside of marriage or if you're married you must not get divorced or you must not have an affair outside your marriage even if it's an unhappy marriage. You're extending it onto, onto the doubt question. That's why I, you know, if, if, if you have the faith yeah. that X will happen because you prayed hard enough for it yeah. and then it doesn't happen, yeah. isn't that then a recipe for, for instilling a sort of psychology of guilt in the mind of the person, assuming things are wrong? If there are all kinds of possibilities of, 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 um, of a person's mind becoming troubled in this religion, in all versions, all religions, but particularly in Christianity. The key thing is to counsel people about these, these matters. So for me, I would never have a, a guilt trip if I pray for someone and they didn't get well or they died. 
because I've, as I've explained it to you, perhaps inadequately to whatever degree, I understand that my prayer may not get the results that I wanted to get. It may be that I had all the faith I needed to have. It may be that I didn't, but if I did, if I come away thinking, yeah, I had enough faith, yet that person wasn't cured, then I'm not going to be guilt tripped. I'm going to think I didn't appreciate God's will for that person. That the will for that person was not then that they come out of this illness. Okay. Thanks very much. All right. All the best.